This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. Uh, the idea of Vote Chat is that we get along a campaigning politician each week, um, talk to them in front of some students here, uh, and just have a conversation about uh, where they're coming from, what their political beliefs are, and why we should vote for them or their party. And we're doing this out on Twitter as well. Um, people are using the hashtag OUVoteChat2011. You can ask your questions or give your responses on that, and we'll talk about them as we go through. And of course, um, this is live streaming on the internet and later available for a, a podcast on iTunes or viewable on YouTube. Okay, so the party of the moment in this election campaign, in my view, is the Green Party. Um, obviously, National's already doing very well, Labour's in the doldrums, but the big party coming up in the middle, or at least uh, rising up to be the th clearly the third party, is the Green Party. They are, according to today's poll, at about 12.5%, so I think they're the big success story of the campaign, and it's, um, so luckily today we've got one of their MPs, Kevin Haig, joining us. Thanks, Kevin. Hi, Bryce, how are you? Uh, very good, thanks. So, I, I, I'm really interested to know a bit about your background before becoming an MP, what got you into politics, and why the Green Party, why environmentalism? Oh, look, I mean, I've, I've been involved in political issues for a long time, like I was, I was at, at school, you know, when I was 12 years old, I set up a, um, a an anti-pollution club at my, oh, at right. my school. So, and uh, and through secondary school, I was involved in uh, you know a variety of, so, I, I guess, education-oriented political issues. So you were environmentalist since the age of 12. Yeah, I'd because... say so. And before that, I was in the. I grew up in England, so yeah. so I was in the um, the young ornithologists club, which was you know. Ch child bird watchers, <laughs> uh, which is you know perhaps a little anarchy, a little tragic, but but actually it kind of indicates sort of my passion for, for the natural nature. world. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. And so there was a strong political aspect of that. Well, I guess liking. not not as a bird watcher, but yeah. but uh, in the in the, I guess anti pollution, the sense of there was something that human beings were doing to the environment, which was destructive, and we should be doing something to stop that occurring. Okay. And I guess through through secondary school and, um, and on into university, my passion was kind of probably m maybe more about fairness and and um, uh, and and uh, sort of dealing with that sort of social justice kind of issue. And then through um, you know the intervening years, uh, involved with a lot of. Uh, community-based organisations. This is in New Zealand? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I shifted here when I was 13, so okay. it's a long time ago now. Yeah. And, um, so anti-apartheid movement, you know, okay. the movement to honour the treaty, um, environmental organisations and obviously gay rights and human rights organisations through all of that time. Okay, so so when did, it, when did the Green Party into the picture for you? Well, uh, I mean, I, I guess I was attracted by values, you know, yeah. back, back in the, in, you know, a long time ago. Wow, yeah. <laughs> um, and, um, and when the Green Party of Aotearoa sort of came along as the latest incarnation of effectively that same political force, uh, it was clearly the party for me in terms of how I voted. But at that time, um, I was either in senior public service roles or senior, senior roles within... NGOs, uh, mm. where actually a, 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 an overt party political alignment wasn't um, appropriate, so I voted Green, mm. and then at the at the well in the, in the years preceding the last election, when I decided that actually I thought um, kind of the next thing that I wanted to do was to actually help the Green Party by standing to become an MP, um, I sort of more formally joined the political party and... and um, so this is like 2007 or... There yeah, I think I probably, probably joined in two, 2006, 2007, yeah. yeah. OK, so parliamentary politics, it was just something you kept your distance from because of these institutional sort of... Oh, in terms um, of direct, direct involvement, but, I mean, in many of the organisations I've been involved with, I mean, mm. so, for example, New Zealand AIDS Foundation, where mm. I was the director, I worked there for 10 years. And, yeah. Director for five, um, you know that's an organisation that's that's working in quite a political environment. Mm. It was not appropriate for for me trying to influence parliamentary process from mm. an NGO 
perspective mm. to be aligned with a partic particular political party. You know, we, in, that, in that setting, you need to be able to work with whichever, whichever parties have power. Okay. So within the Green Party, I guess, or maybe even with the wider parliament, you probably come from many different political aspects. You talk about um, the human rights, gay rights, um, conservation, yeah. um, social justice. Um, student you, issues you, too. Student I issues, so lots of different yeah, sort of political themes. President of the Students Association in 1980. So. Yeah, I mean I, I, I mean, I think I've got um, a really broad range of perspectives that I, that I bring at, uh, fr from the political side of things. Yeah. And then in addition to that, you know, I, I have had that experience in the health sector for mm. quite some time, you know, over 20 years, and um, uh, and also some experience in business. You know, I, I had my own bookshop on Waiheke Island, I sort of managed other people's bookshops over the years as well. So, I mean, I do see myself as, as, uh, as having a, a very broad yeah. um, background, but also specialisations in some particular areas. So the specialisations would be... Well, I, I mean, I'd identify health in particular mm. uh, and conservation in terms of portfolio areas, yeah. but also, of course, gay rights and the gay, gay rights, human rights interface and, um, and around racism and treaty issues, I guess, would be probably the issues I'd, I'd identify. OK. So, as the Green Party, your way of sort of bringing all those issues together in one sort of um, world view, or I mean, how can you do it? Disparate sort of all these yeah. disparate issues. Or yeah, yes, it, it is. I mean, I mean, the Green Party obviously, I mean, comes from some some broad traditions. You know, mm. comes from a um, a social justice tradition as well as an environmental um, tradition. The peace movement is in there as well. You know, non-violence is one of our charter mm. principles. So. So all of those ideas, and I guess the, the appropriate decision-making principle that's also fundamental to Green Party thinking and the way we do politics, probably arises out of the new movements in the, in the 70s. Right. Um, OK. So I, I should introduce you to Nikki Lomax, in fact, um, who's a politics honours uh, student here at the university. She's been doing some research on the Green Party and focusing on sort of the yeah the new social movements sort yeah. of influence yeah. and um, building into the Green Party. And um, so, do you want to? We could discuss your dissertation a bit or your thesis. Okay. Um, and we'll, we can see what Kevin thinks about your <laughs> explanations for the Greens success so far? Um, well, my dissertation looked at, um, so went all the way back to values and kind of looked at the strategic, I guess, um, the way that the Greens had, tri Greens had tried to get electoral success then all the way through to now and kind of says that um, right now the Greens are, are really finding a really good balance between being seen as both inside in the sense that they, in the sense that you, you're much more likely to maybe have access to parliamentary seats in power than you were in the 70s, um, but at the same time still retaining that kind of outsider thing to attract to people who who are kind of dis disillusioned with the two major parties. And mm -hmm. but, may, but in the past, the outsider thing was much bigger for you guys, which probably limited your success in a, in a way that it doesn't so much now. So yeah, there's this balance yeah. between I mean, insider outsider sort of. I, I, mean, I think that's I mean that's probably right. I mean I think that. The one of the ways that maybe we used to be perceived was was largely as a, effectively as a, an NGO that was mm. protesting about actually a, a range of things, mm. and I think that's clearly changed. You know, we, we, you know, probably our identity as a political party is is now stronger. Um, and well, what do political parties do? They try to influence the decision making from the inside. In fact, I had a really um, interesting conversation with a friend yesterday who's. Um, Pretty like national supportery, um, but he, <laughs> but he was saying that um, he he w is very strongly considering voting Greens in this election because um, in the past his perception has been that um, they're all, they're all he he used some interesting terminology basically like hippies you know um, that didn't have much credibility but he's like incredibly impressed with the economics pl economic plan of the Greens this time and all these kind of things and it was just really interesting to hear him say that because it kind of Mm. supports what I tend to think, which is that the, the focus on economics has made you seem a lot more government-oriented, yeah, maybe? It is kind of interesting. I, you know, I had an email from Jeanette Fitzsimons a couple of days ago. Um, uh, there must have been a comment in the media about saying, oh, actually, the Greens have got it together on economics now. And 
Jeanette was ex expressing some exasperation. I can imagine. Because yeah. you know, the, the fact is, our policies actually haven't changed. You know, the, the things that we're standing for are exactly the same right the way through. It's may, there's maybe a, a difference in tone of presentation, maybe st style of presentation. Um, but actually, you know, the, you know, we've been in favour of a comprehensive capital, capital gains tax for a long time. We've been in favour of progressive taxation for a long time. None of, I mean, literally none of our policies have, have changed. There's maybe a, you know, a little bit more elaboration of detail, but that's it. The communication has definitely changed. Like when, yeah. like, so the pre the presentation of the jobs, but the fact that the jobs thing is such a big focus for you guys in this yes. campaign has yeah. never been the case before. And the, and having, you know, the the presentation of it with with Russell Norman in a suit next to the Aquaflow CEO, like, yeah. talking business in that way, it's not really normally it hasn't in the past been associated with. The I think that's probably a reflection of a couple of things. I mean, I think it's partly a a, a change of tone from us. Um, but it's also probably a change of consciousness from others as well, you know, so that while we're largely saying the same things, um, that was maybe something that people weren't all that turned on to in, in previous years, where now there's maybe a growing awareness. I mean, one of the things that's happened with the global financial crisis, for example, is that most countries in the world um, have embraced this idea of uh, trying to deal with the environmental crisis and economic crisis at the same time by creating you know, green collar jobs. So the environment that other people are, are working in, like, so the media coverage of that international scene um, and awareness of some of the initiatives in other countries is maybe creating a, a more fertile environment for our kind of message. Um, and, so, and certainly, well, in terms of approach, one of the things that I think is actually really important is that uh, to convince people that that we are not just some, um, you know a, a, a flaky kind of choice, you know, a place to put their vote, is to actually be credible on the, on the contemporary issues. So the issue of job creation, I guess, um, was maybe not such a not such a high profile issue during those those years of booming economy, but actually has has become in sharp focus. In, in the time that unemployment, in fact, has doubled under national. So, so uh, in terms of being relevant on contemporary issues, unemployment and where do jobs come from is clearly one of those. So we've, we've tried to take the approach more or less on, on every issue that we're commenting on, you know, where, where we're critical of the government's approach. We're saying what we would do in the situation and to deal with this issue is this. You know, here is here's our solution. And also, um, because we're aware that it's it's one of the critiques that National has used in the past, you know that um, that that uh, you know the Greens are you know idealistic dreamers. We've actually tried to be incredibly um, focused on the detail. You know, how would this policy work? How much would it actually cost? How many jobs would it create? Where would the money come from? Um, so that so that impracticality charge can't be laid out as credibly anyway. Mm.